Hey guys, welcome on Into Drinks with Binks. I'm Julie Stewart Binks. We are WFH, working from home, wasted from home. You can pick your poison. We know that we're doing our show from my kitchen right now with our people from our studio at their houses, LiveX and Fubo TV coming together to bring you this content while we're all trying to figure out our new normal during a very difficult time right now. And we know that it's a very serious issue with coronavirus around the world affecting athletes, entertainers, and just every single person. And we're going to address that, but we're also going to try to have some fun and have some sort of semblance of normalcy. And so on that note, we wanted to welcome in one of my good friends who's been on Call It A Night, has been wanting to come on drinks with, you know him, ESPN. And broadcaster, host on NFL Live, also on Gold Wingo, the one and only Trey Wingo, who is rolling his face. How's it going, Hi, buddy? Julie. Good. Well, you can <laughs> this ice roller. And I'm just trying. Am I doing it right? Is this the right way? Am I doing it correctly? Yeah, you're good. You were doing I brought mine, obviously, too. This is the hot new also not up. Uh, you got to go slow on the face. It's supposed to be cooling. It's in your freezer. Um, I'm kind of a bit of an influencer these days, obviously. So yeah, sure, you know, just gotta keep the skin going. You got you got to keep the skin nice while literally you can't go outside or see anybody. So as you can see, how I you doing? I'm caring about that a long time ago. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Trey. So we know that we are drinking and banking. What do we got again today? Well, I am a, a, a connoisseur of this little baby called Gray's Peak Meyer Lemon Vodka. Now, most people go Meyer Lemon or lemon flavored vodka it tastes like an air freshener in a car. This one really doesn't. You, you gotta check it out, Gray's Peak, and then you cut it with a little uh, a Paul, uh, a new uh, mango tango or pineapple juice, and it's quite delicious. Cause they say during the pandemic, it's important to have your citrus, so. They do say that. They say alcohol they okay. is numero uno as well. Well, you asked me what drink you want to have, and you told me some sort of pineapple vodka, which was, yours is way cooler than mine, but I'm doing a pineapple vodka over here. And what, Trey, what are, what are we toasting to today? What are we, what are we raising our glasses to? Um, we're raising our glasses to another day where we get to keep going because I think that's the most important thing at this point, right? I mean, I think we're all feeling kind of times about everything and there's a lot of uncertainty in the world. But at the end of the day, we're gonna get through this. It's gonna be a little bumpy and we just need to, the thing that bothers me, JSB, is that people are choosing to listen to other people besides the ones that have, you know, like PhD or, you know, head of national infectious diseases behind their name. I love all these people who are all saying, oh, it's just this, it's just that. How do you bleeping know? Why don't we just mm -hmm. take a moment, pause, and listen to the people who have spent their life working in these fields, adhere to what they're telling us, and the sooner we do this, the sooner this, like a kidney stone, will pass. Very true, exactly. If we just follow the orders, okay. Cheers to, cheers to that. Take a little swig of this. Cheers. Mm -hmm. So, Trey, we know you're at your home in Connecticut. Avon, is it? Whereabouts yeah. are you? Yeah. yeah then yes, that's correct. Okay. And tell, walk me through like a day. Like how do you are you how are you still broadcasting? Like what's a life day in the life of Trey Wingo these days? Yeah, it's really interesting actually, and I have to give ESPN all the credit in the world. They took this very seriously. I got a call ten days ago and said we are doing as many remote broadcasts as we can. The Seaport Studio in New York is shut down. Uh, everybody is doing as much houses wow my hand comes in the picture and it looks giant sorry um, yeah it looks but, weird right so, yeah <laughs> yeah right very strange so i'll keep doing it um so i live about a mile and a half from golick so the three of us are doing the house the show in his basement now i also have a what's called a comrex unit set up right over there uh at my bar downstairs because of course i do it from my house i'll be doing it from the bar uh, yes, but it's great. the three of us are, are working over there. Our producers are working remotely. All our board ops are working remotely. In fact, ESPN on a normal day, Banks has about 1,500 to 2,000 employees at the Bristol campus. They are trying to m put that under 150 every day. It, it's, oh. it's remarkable. Uh, no one is going into the office, and we're still pumping out all the shows. So I, I really applaud ESPN for taking this thing seriously and doing whatever they can to make sure everybody is able to work but work remotely and work safely. And so 
we're recording this on a Monday. It's going to air on Friday. But at this time, SportsCenter is still on. Like, there are still some shows there, right? Yeah, a- absolutely. Out. NFL Live is still on. We've done a bunch of pre-draft shows. I had to go into the studio uh, to do a pre-draft show on free agency when the when the new league year began, what, last Wednesday? Um, but, in fact, it's, it, just so people understand how strict ESPN is taking this, like, I've been there 22 years, right? If I wanted to go into the building, because I have an office there and I've got some stuff in my office, I couldn't go in right now. Like for me to get on campus, I would have to get a note from one of my supervisors that says he's allowed on campus today to get this. I, I mean, I if I walked over there or drove over there, it's about 20 minutes I live. If I drove over there right now and swiped my card, they would not let me in. I'd have to have access wow. from somebody else to let me in. That's how serious they're taking it, which I think is really great. Yeah, that's really good to hear because we know that this is serious. And I find it interesting though, and the two Golics can all still like social distance from one another in like you're at house. Yeah, we, we, sit, we sit on a big table about six to eight feet away from each other. <laughs> at this, you know, together for so long, it's kind of like herd immunity. I mean, but yeah, uh, we, you know, <laughs> if we do, if it does come back that one of us is, you know, has tested positive, we can still do it remotely all three ways. So, but mm-hmm. you know, at this point, I think it's a show a little easier if the three of us are together uh, as long as we can be. And But again, it's just three of us, because right? what are the guidelines? No more than 10 people in one place. Mm-hmm. We have one production purpose with us there, so that's four, and then everybody else works remotely. We have a staff of about 30 people on the show, and no more than three of them are together at any one time. That's great, and as you said, uh, you guys are basically quarantining together. You're you're already a family. The Golik and Wingo family. The Golik, Golik. Eating a lot of donuts, and it's not helping me. Oh man. Okay, yeah, that is that's going to be a big topic, everyone. The Corona thing. If hopefully it's just that. What's been your go-to quarantine food right now? Well, what we're trying to do um, in our little neck of the woods is that we have like three or four restaurants that we go out to all the time. And obviously they're shut down except for takeout. So what we're trying to do, as long as they're open, we're ordering takeout every night just mm-hmm. to make sure those restaurants keep going. Because obviously, you know, we want everything to go back to normal. And if everybody stops doing that and all the, I mean, there's about, you know, 12, 13 restaurants within a very close radius of our, our home. We want, the, we want those businesses to succeed. So as long as we can't, we've stocked up on all, you know, the, the food and, the, you know, the work carryout options. We've got plenty of that. But as long as we can get out and get and like support their business in any way can, we're going to keep doing that because they want them. We want them to keep going. So that's what we've been doing. Just take out every night. Yeah, that's a great idea. As so many of these different businesses in the restaurant industry, service industry is being hit really hard right now. And everyone's being very saving all the precautions that they need to. I've been really binging on Oreos, which I never really did before. But Amazon like lets you add that to your cart at the end. So, I mean, why not, eh? So, yeah, um, so how, I was about to say, how did, how did we get to the Oreos? I, I, need, I need details of this. My life was going fine until I got hit with the Oreos during the pandemic. Okay, perfect. What a tease. We're about Oreos and a whole lot more with Trey Wingo when we return on Drinks with Thanks. Stay with us. Ooh. Hey guys, welcome back to Drinks with Big Thanks and JSB. I'm sipping on a little full vodka. Hey, Wingo from ESPN. He's got a way cooler drink than I do, but you know, I'm I'm learning. I'm learning. Um, Is there alcohol then, in the glass? So, yes, there's always alcohol in this. Okay, glass. then you're fine. We're good. We're good. That's we're all. We're fine. I'm feeling real. I'm feeling really great on this on this Monday afternoon. We're shooting this and. Trey's got the ice roller going. This is the newest, hottest product of quarantine time where it can depuff your skin. You put it in the freezer. Depuff's also very good for migraines and headaches. I am not selling this, but I really should be. So Trey has Can one. it depuff my nose? Is that possible? Can I make my nose? Yeah, I think if you, I think if you work hard enough at it, you can depuff <laughs> it. I mean, I'll, I'll do stupid anyway, but you know what? Say la vie. We're here drinking a Bacon. We're discussing Oreos making a real comeback during the quarantine yeah. time. Everyone's everyone's eating Oreos. Have you noticed this? I've noticed that I've ejected more bread and pot over the last twelve days than I have in the last twelve months. So uh, the, my <laughs> facial know. puffiness may be the least of my issues. This becoming the <laughs> Stay Puft Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters is more likely. 
Yeah, I think we might need a little more than just the ice roller for our face when we're all yeah. said and done. Um, what kind of, how are you, what's your like exercise routine at home? Like what's, what are your tips? What do you do? Well, you know, uh, at, which I find was a great coincidence as we were talking before we started doing this, your father was an Olympic crewer and uh, my wife has crewed and, and she does a lot of crewing and she's at the head of the Charles a couple of years. So we have an erg in the basement over here. So we do that. But it's been really nice. I like to get outside when I can. And I know people are going to say, whoa, social distancing. We live in the woods in rural Connecticut. OK, I mean, literally, if I could, I could walk outside and not run into another person for 30, 40 minutes at a time. And if I do, yeah. I'm 12 feet away from them. So I, as long as I can get outside and sort of like walk and we have lots of trails around here i will run into four people if i'm outside for an hour and a half i just like being outside now it's snowing i don't know if you can see that out there in the window but we've had a oh, little man, snow it looks like snow. Today. yeah it kind of sucks but uh other than that I, I if i can get outside every day and just like move you know that's that's my biggest thing is to get outside and that's what yeah, dr fauci says crazy. by the way yes dr fauci says get outside if you can well, I mean, that's great for obviously people who have residential homes and whatnot. I don't even think I'm yeah. socially distant the per side of this wall in Manhattan right now. Like we're already <laughs> we're already breaking the rules just by living here, which kind of sucks. Right. Um, if it's snowing, that will that will make people stay inside. Um, we discussed how quarantine sort of affected us and the coronavirus, but so much is so much is happening in the sports world and with the NBA really making that change early on affected a number of different leagues and a number of different people around the world. How do you think that coronavirus will change the landscape of sports? Like when this is all said and done, like what do you think is going to be, what's your think going to be the sticking point, the takeaway from everything we've been through in terms of sports? You know, that's a great, that no, that's a great question, Julie, because this won't be the last time something like this happens. I mean, let's be clear. Um, and now it may not happen this often, but, you know, in the last, what, 20 years, we've had SARS, avian flu, H1N1, and, and now this, with obviously this one being, and the thing about this one, I, I, and again, I'm not an infectious disease expert, I'm not a virologist, but I listen to those people, and the one thing they tell me about this one is, it's not that it's more deadly, but it's more infectious. Uh, like if you have the common flu, which kills a lot of people across the world every year, if you have it, you're going to infect one to 1.3, 1.4 other people. With this one, you're going to infect up to three, maybe four people if you have it. And if you multiply that out, you know, it's potentially that if, if with the flu, you could infect 14 people. If you multiply it out to a certain number, one, one person that has it could infect 59,000 people. And I think mm -hmm. that's the weird thing about this. And I wonder if we're going to look at massive events differently because let's take for example the nfl draft which is coming up in april uh and it looks like we'll be in separate studios in different places last year in nashville alone we had six hundred and fifty thousand people attend the nfl draft over a three-day period it was massive so fun and there was so much energy you know i wonder if we're going to look at things differently after this is it a good idea to have that many in a very, very congested area. Uh, I would hope that we can find some sense where it's we can do those things and still be safe. But like that, that's the thing that I'm taking away. When you look at, you know, for example, the 2018 World Cup, when Croatia made it to the finals and the, you know, the throngs of people in the street, or even when the U.S. women won the, won the World Cup last year, there were so many people out there celebrating together. Sports is such a communal experience. We love the mm -hmm. games, but we love sharing it with the people who either share our passion or are rooting for the other team so we can stick it to them when we win. And, and I think yeah. I, I, my, my biggest fear is some of that might be lost because that's what makes sports fun, right? I mean, I, I, you do this too. On an NFL Sunday, if you're not at a stadium, you're watching the games and you're on Twitter and you're interacting with a million different people. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if that's going to be the new normal instead of being in one place at one time. Yeah, I can see that. And when you say that, I mean, we're all going to go through sort of the, the mental aspect of this as well. Like when we come out, like, do we want to be as many people in a bar and being in close quarters when we kind of dealt with like a very true experience for many people, as we know that we're not even near anywhere near close to what this potential peak could be. Uh, you mentioned the NFL draft. And at this time, you know, it's a Monday. We saw Sean Payton has contracted the virus. The yeah. fact that, like, the NFL almost seems sort of immune to it because the season was not 
not da 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 da. How do you think this virus is going to affect the NFL? Well, you know, hopefully, it, it. I mean, the NFL starts. I mean, the, the regular season starts in September, so we are extremely hopeful that by that time things will be back to normal. Um, but you know, the NFL is sort of benefiting off of this, and I don't want to say they're trying to do that. It's just sort of the way it is. The sport is shut down, right? The only thing that can happen in the NFL are deals, which don't really necessary necessarily mean people have to be together. So thank God, you know, in one sense that we have something to talk about that gives us that sense of normalcy right now when we're looking for it. But going forward, I think what it's going to curtail is preparation for the start of the season. I mean, we draft coming up to 23rd, 24th, 25th, and that is going to happen. There's no doubt about that. That is going to go off as scheduled. It'll just be a different experience. But right after that, you have rookie mini camps and then OTAs, organized team activities. I don't know if any of those are going to start. So it could be a situation where if we all adhere to the policies that the doctors are telling us, please, <laughs> that's so important. Listen to the medical people, nobody else. Listen to the medical people. Um, that we have a season that quite frankly, usually training camps begin in, in mid July. That might be the first time these teams are together, which would all the rookies or the new free agents that come over, whether they're quarterbacks or wide receivers or running backs or defensive ends, that may be the first time everybody gets together, which means the first month of the season could be some really sloppy football because I have no idea mm -hmm. at this point when we're going to be able to say, yes, you as a group of 90 guys, yeah, that's what the roster sizes are before we start, when we start training camp, we'll get down to cuts, are going to be sweating on each other, leaning on each other, hitting each other. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we can't do that until we know everything is good. So it it might be a really weird start to the season with all kinds of mess ups. Yeah, it definitely, I mean, it, even though they're not in session right now, really, like it's still like many different areas, as you mentioned. And we do want to talk NFL because there's been a lot of exciting NFL news over the last little while and still to come. So stay with us, guys. We've got actual sports talk with Trey Wingo and some text. Hi, I'm Boog Shambi, and I had drinks with Binks. Hey guys, welcome back to Drinks with Binks. We're sipping on a little to, uh, vodka pineapple here. Whatever, right it's down. alcohol in a glass. Just embrace it. It's alcohol in a glass. The wheels are wet. Wheels are coming off always on Drinks with Binks. And we're talking about NFL. Gotta just gotta address it right now. Um, Tom Brady as a Buccaneer. What are what are you excited about? What are you worried about? How this all goes down? You know, um, I'm not worried about anything. Um, but it just to me, it was it was inevitable. Like people are like, "Are you surprised that he left?" I'm like, "Wait a minute. Let's understand something." In training camp in August, someone were, someone asked him, "Hey, Tom, what's your situation?" And he leaned into the microphone and said, "Well, don't you think I deserve a contract extension?" Once this season started, and the Patriots were like. Yeah, we're good. Tom Brady was like, yeah, we're good. This is an inevitable outcome once he started week one without a contract. For anybody that thought he was coming back, I'm like, wait a minute. You understand the two parties that could have made sure this wasn't going to happen decided not to do it. So how anyone thought he was going to stay, I don't understand. Because they could have, if either side wanted to do that, they could have done that in August. They chose not to. This was the inevitable outcome. Now, some people are surprised by the fact that it's Tampa, but you have 2,000-yard receivers in Tampa. They've got a really good defense. They've got a solid running game. Their offensive line is okay. You have a head coach in Bruce Arians who is, for lack of a better term, a quarter whisperer. The guys that he's worked with have been Peyton Manning, Ben Roethlisberger, Carson Palmer. They've all had some of their best years working with Bruce. And this is the thing that maybe people didn't focus on enough. The, head, the general manager of the Tampa Bay Bucks is a guy named Jason Light. In 2000, he was in the scouting department for New England. In other words, he was one of the guys that said, yeah, let's take a flyer on that Tom Brady guy. So why not finish your career with a guy who was part of giving you a chance to begin with? Oh, and oh, by the way, there's no state income tax in Florida. Yeah, that is really nice added on there. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, you mentioned he's got a lot of new weapons there. And we've seen so many other shakeups with Philip Rivers going to Indy, uh, DeAndre Hopkins going to Arizona, you know, Stephon Diggs and Blow. When you look at all of the things that we've seen so far on this Monday, like what is uh, what stands out to you sort of the, besides Tom Brady, but like 
the biggest shakeup? Well, what's interesting to me is not the biggest shakeup, but the team that figured it out, although reverse engineered it. I mean, let's be clear, are the Cowboys. They're going to keep everybody. They kept, they found a way to sign Amari Cooper, uh, who instead of going to free agency, they signed Zeke last year. They signed all their other players uh, last season, last off season as well. Now they did the they did the quarterback last, which is the dumbest thing in the world. It's going to cost them more money. Yeah. Of getting ahead of it, but literally they kept everybody. I mean, they did it bass backwards as you could, and it might work out. Now it's going to cost them it should, but they kept them all. They've got Zeke. They've got Amari. They've got Dak. They're going to work out that long-term deal one way or the other. So for all the people, including myself, who criticized Jerry Jones for, for not taking care of the course, my God, somehow they found a way to make it work. Now it's going to cost Jerry more money, but Jerry, as you know, you know, throws up $40 bills, even though they don't exist. But that, my point yes. is that's how rich he is. So, I mean, it, it, he had it to burn, and he's willing to burn it. Right, and they were a bit of a laughing stock for, for a while there, but now uh, very exciting to watch. And for you, Trey, be, as we maybe start the season next year, what's one thing that like that you think will be the biggest storyline, at least you know, in the oh. first couple weeks of the season? Listen, it's going to be all season long. Is Bill winning or is Brady winning? It's, it's not a fair thing, but the people are going to do it. I mean, is Bill going to have more Excellent without Brady, or is Brady going to have more success in Tampa? Oh, by the way, let's be clear. Tampa Bay is a good situation for Brady, but the, the Saints run that division, and they also picked up Emmanuel Sanders, a wide receiver who was in the Super Bowl last year. And he's a what we call a professional chain mover. I mean, he will make the keep drives alive. You have Mike Thomas. You have Alvin Kamara. Uh, so, I mean, it, that's still the Saints division yeah. to run. Tampa Bay could do well, but it, that's still the Saints division to lose. So that's going to be the override in the NFL. Will the Patriots' success continue without Tom Brady, or will Tom Brady prove it was more about him than Bill Belichick? There, there's no sugarcoating it. That is going to be yeah. the story in the NFL next season. Yeah, everyone will keep be keeping track between the two, as you mentioned. And I'm excited. I mean, once we end up getting to the NFL season, we will have forgotten about all these moves, and it'll be like a whole new fresh script. All right, we got to take our final time program, but we'll be back with more Trey Wingo, Drinking and Bacon. All right, guys, welcome back to Drinks with Binks. We have no time left, but before we go, we got to do a little truth serum on Trey's life. Trey, one word answers, <laughs> lightning round. Favorite person okay. to work with at ESPN? Oh, probably Mark Schlereth, who's not here anymore. We did, we did NFL Live together for 13 years. He was like my work wife. We, we were, we okay, were domestic partners. that's more than one word. That's more than Thank one you. word. And Mark Schlereth. Well, Mark Schlereth, okay, that's it. More truth serum on Trey's life. Everybody has a first and a last name. Okay, well, now what we're going to do is we're going to pour out a shot, Trey. Totally about the story. We're going to yes. pour out a shot for someone who deserves it. We're doing whiskey. I got a little Canadian club. Uh, where's the, Who's the shot going to, Trey? Who deserves a shot? This, this is a little whiskey with an Alexander Hamilton shot glass. This is to all the people that are doing their damnedest to keep us safe. That is the frontline medical people at hospitals, first responders that are that are risking their lives to make sure we're safe. Yes. We appreciate awesome. the hell out of them. And again, to Dr. You. Fauci Thank and everybody so else, cheers to them. Yes. You ready? Bottoms up. Here we go. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Trey. Let's do it. We'll see you next time. Woo! Woo-hoo! Don't touch your face.